What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on this video. My name is Terrence. I'm a pre-med student currently in my gap year. I'll be looking to start medical school in August of 2020. In this video, I wanted to touch on, you know, how to stand out as a medical school applicant. So to start with me, um, I've been very fortunate and successful in this 2020 cycle. We're wrapping up the end of the cycle right now. And I know there's some people that are still doing interviews and different things like that, but uh, I'm pretty much done from what I have. I'm still waiting on a, a couple of schools uh, based on acceptances, but I applied to 20 schools. I was awarded or invited for uh, 14 of those 20 schools. And um, I went on 10 of those interviews and was accepted to seven of those 10 programs so far. So I pretty much went through all the requirements and how you know, schools uh, look at applicants and I came up with pretty much five categories and they're pretty f general their grades um, your extracurriculars your clubs your hobbies uh, your healthcare experience your if you do research or not and um, letters of recommendation so those five categories I kind of want to go into more detail and kind of explain how I feel that you can stand out in each one of those sections so the first thing I want to get started with is grades uh, grades are pretty cut and dry. There's not really much to take away. Uh, there's few things, a few things you want to work on, um, but you have, you know, all the courses that you have to take: English, Math, Gen Chem, Bio, Orgo, uh, Biochem, Psychology, Sociology, um, and at the end of all those different classes, um, you have to take, you know, it's also good to take um, upper division science coursework if you're not a bio major that's something that you may want to focus on taking those upper division courses uh med schools like that they like to see that you're challenging yourself and you're also able to handle uh, challenging coursework at the highest level when it comes to advice i'd say like i said before there's not much to finesse when it comes to grades but uh don't let a bad grade ever define you you know learn from it recover from it and see how you can improve and make that those changes you know i've had definitely situations where I got worse grades than I expected and the best thing I could have done in those situations was just to learn from it and not let those things happen again. Uh, when you get to the end of your university years and your college undergrad years, you want to make sure you, you know, try to have as many A's as possible. Show that you can finish strong and that you've matured over time. If you started off slow, make sure you have that upward trend. You know, Everybody talks about upward trends in uh, GPA and sh showing that you can improve over time and having, uh, and you know, if you're somebody that didn't start off poorly, you know, show that consistency over time. Uh, second thing I'll talk about is healthcare related experiences. Um, with, when it comes to healthcare related experiences, I feel that this is an opportunity for med schools to kind of look at you and say, okay, what do you have interest in? Um, do you have interest and passion for healthcare beyond being a physician? And based on those interested, based on those interests, uh, and passions that you have, you know, are you taking action on them? When it comes to healthcare experiences, I feel that kind of like everything, um, if you find something that you enjoy and find something that you have uh, somewhat of a passion for, or you like doing and you don't mind going to it, you're gonna take uh, get more out of it than if you choose something that you wanna do just because everybody else is doing. If you don't wanna be an EMT, don't be an EMT because all your friends are doing it. Um, do something that will give you that drive and that passion because that passion will come out in your work and, oh, and you'll be able to um, grab more from those experiences. Uh, third thing is pretty important, um, especially now, is research. I, I would say do research if you can. Um, I originally didn't want to do research and then eventually fell in love with it. Um, a lot of people now are doing research. So if you want to try to stand out, do research. And, you know, when you go into the lab and even if you may not be 100 percent about it right away, you know, give that full effort. Uh, doing research over a long period of time versus a short stint and maybe the summer or uh, a winter break um, doing short projects uh, may not necessarily look worse but in order to build connections i feel the best way is to do research in one lab or a couple labs over a long period of time you can improve and increase your role over time and get more responsibility from your lab pi and that will thus lead you to you know having better things in the future like strong letters of recommendation which i'll talk about in a little bit so if you want to stand out, um, do long periods of research over time. Uh, try to find a way to uh, really fall in love with it. Try to find a subject that and a, a topic in research that you may have a passion for or have an interest in. We all are 
interested in science. Otherwise, we wouldn't be interested in medicine. So try to find a topic in science that you may be interested in and go after that. And that will uh, help propel your interests and propel your efforts in that research lab. Um, always ask your PIs for more responsibilities and go above and beyond so that they see that you are um, you know, somebody that takes initiative. And in, in certain cases, you could also apply to do um, paid research over the summers and different things like that. And awards like that will help you um, stand out as well. Uh, obviously, also with research, the longer you do research, the more um, chances you have for a publication. Uh, I was fortunate to have a publication before I was applying to medical school and publications are weird because they're kind of timing based and based on the lab that you're in. But also the more time you spend in the lab, the more likelihood you will have the responsibility and be given the privileges to uh, contribute towards publishing a paper. The next thing here is extracurriculars, jobs and hobbies. So I think this is pretty simple but also a very good way to stand out um, as a medical school applicant uh, the extracurriculars and the hobbies and the and the jobs and the clubs that you do are what identify you as you know it allows the medical schools to personify you and it personifies your uh, application instead of just being a number this allows you to create a story and have a identity in in some cases so you know, are you somebody that's adventurous? Are you somebody that innovates and discovers? Are you somebody that's a musician, a compassionate person, a leader? Uh, these extracurriculars will allow you to identify yourself as one of those things. And um, when it comes to extracurriculars, I think one thing that will set, you know, a lot sets a lot of people apart um, is your willingness to go above and beyond with those, with those extracurriculars. You know, whether or not you like uh, a club, you know, being not just being a member of the club, but also trying to go for executive board members or leadership roles, starting your own club at your university, whether or not you have 100 people or 10 people, um, just starting and initiating your own clubs and initiating uh, things around your extracurriculars and your hobbies. Uh, I think that's what made me specifically step uh, stand out. And I'll talk about my primary application and go through it um, and go through all the things that I did as an undergrad. But I think for the biggest thing for me is uh, a lot of uh, interviewers like that I initiated uh, different things and created my own uh, things around my um, my interests and my hobbies and I focus a lot on the things that I was interested in all these things add up so I mean if you do the things that you enjoy if you you know do the clubs that you enjoy if you do the extracurriculars that you enjoy if you do healthcare experiences that you enjoy and put full effort in uh, people are going to notice the people that you are working with and working under are going to notice and that extra effort that extra um, initiative and all those little things um, those nuances will add up to the to create uh, a portfolio for you and an identity it's easy to just join things and and just do it for the sake of doing it but um by kind of saying to yourself, hey, I'm going after uh, something that's really hard and going after you know, medical school and putting yourself out there and you know, putting your best foot forward, um, that's what leads to strong letters of recommendation and just genuine connections in my, in my opinion. I never try to, I always felt weird you know, going to a, a professor's office hours just because I wanted to uh, kind of like smooch him up to, or smooch her up to get a letter of recommendation. You know, I always try to do things genuinely and I think that genuineness will uh, push you through and prevail you to getting strong letters of recommendation. Biggest thing is just try to do you, uh, be comfortable in yourself and enjoy um, every single step of the way when you're, when you're going through this process. If you have any more questions, please let me know. Comment down below. If you're new, please subscribe and like the video. If you enjoy the video, I'll be putting out weekly content on my pre-med experience, uh, the MCAT applications, and also uh, future experiences as a medical student. Uh, thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you guys in another video. Thank you, and let's get it.